All right, I would like to welcome all Golf Asian golfers and partners to our new series, uh, which is the Golf Asian Partner Series. And I'm here today with Henrik Fries, Regional Director of Turkey Irrigation Division at Jepson Jepson. Uh, nice to meet you, Henrik. Thank you, How you Nice to uh, be together with you yeah. here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, thank you very much also for your time. If you, um, if you don't mind, please introduce yourself a little bit and then tell the world what you're doing and what uh, what your role is at Jepson Jepson. Right, I will start. I'm, I'm originally from uh, Denmark mm -hmm. and I moved uh, here 28 years ago to start to work for a Danish company. And eight years ago, I moved to uh, Jepson Jepson and uh, working uh, with the golf industry. So, the golf industry is relatively new for me, only eight years. Um, what is your role here at uh, Jepson Jepson? I look after, I'm the regional director looking after all our activities in, in the golf industry, our division turf and irrigation. So I look after nine countries in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm. So if I take them from uh, the bottom up, uh, it's Indonesia, Singapore, Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, uh, Vietnam and uh, Myanmar. Okay, you must have been traveling a lot uh, pre-COVID, I guess, you? Yes, yeah. a lot, too much in yeah. certain instances. Yeah. And uh, Jepson, Jepson, uh, I'm not sure everyone is familiar with uh, with the name uh, in, in golf, but maybe let us know a little bit what we are doing, what the company is doing uh, in the golf industry. Yeah, we have been in the golf industry for uh, 22 years. Uh, we have taken over the distribution activity from another company 22 years ago, and we had uh, our main business is uh, distribution of uh, total turf equipment mm -hmm. across the nine countries. And then we are top card distributor in, in uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Brunei, and Vietnam, uh, Myanmar as well. Uh, and then we distribute a lot of other um, related products to the golf course maintenance uh, industry. So we are also uh, distributing harbor chemical fertilizers, uh, other okay. things. So we're trying to do turnkey solutions for our customers in terms of uh, turf maintenance for okay. all the there's a huge array of uh, products and services that you're offering to various uh, industries. That, that's interesting. What are some of the new solutions being rolled out by Jepson and Jepson, for, especially for golf, and that golfers can look forward to in the next few months or years? It, it will uh, be hard for the golfers to see, mm -hmm. uh, but what we are all working on, us and our suppliers together with our customers, is increasing uh, effectiveness and uh, efficiency in, in, in golf course maintenance and that is mainly done with uh, new technology in terms of machines but also uh, IoT, uh, GPS, uh, you name it. So our customers are going more uh, online mm -hmm. uh, so we are trying to develop solutions that helps them to improve uh, efficiency and, and improve golf course management, maintenance and hopefully that will uh, reduce Costing or maintain costing uh, in their operations, meaning they can provide better service at a more affordable price. Yeah, and ultimately, this will also increase the uh, or improve the experience that golfers have here on the ground right. uh, in, in Asia. Okay, that's very good. Do you see any challenges uh, in, in this area that Jepson Jepson is facing? <laughs> I think the biggest challenge we are all going through at the moment, and, and I think you are hit harder than we are, yeah. and, and that is the COVID. Uh, we have some customers which is struggling a lot because of no tourism, uh, but we have others who is doing reasonably well, uh, mm -hmm. because uh, <laughs> all the golfers cannot travel anywhere, including yeah. myself, so we are playing a little bit more golf at home. Uh, so it's a mixed picture uh, for us, uh, but the challenge is going forward is, I think, to, uh, how to say, uh, get things become more effective in the, in the golf industry. Okay. Do you see any opportunities uh, within this area? I mean, not, not for COVID so much, but uh, opportunities for golf tourism in general here in Asia? Right. I, I, I think that Asia is generally the sweet spot for, for golf tourism. And I think there's a lot of things to do. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for golf to operators, golf courses, if they work together to, to provide a, a experiences to the golfer. And it's not only uh, in the golf courses, but it's also outside of the golf courses. And that's where Asia have a lot of things to offer. We have everything from beaches to fine dining to uh, yeah, fantastic golf uh, venues. Yeah, and uh, also great accommodation. Uh, the 
hospitality of the Thai, of Asian people, Thai people, um, great infrastructure, uh, fantastic uh, flight connections globally. Right. So all of this adds adds to the, to the experience. And if you're a golfer who likes to uh, uh, tick the bucket list of uh, top designers, we have a lot of top designers yeah. in, in our region. So yeah. so uh, we offer a lot of people. Yeah. And even new courses by top designers are coming up. So if you if you have been here already uh, for numerous times, you can come back again, and I'm sure you will find a new course that you can enjoy. Right. We just in Thailand alone, there's three right, coming up. Yeah. And since you have been here for uh, for quite a while, and you have also been to the golf courses uh, over the years, do you see personally any improvements that the courses could give to the customers, or to, to that the courses could do to improve the customer experience? I think there's uh, the biggest challenge in the golf industry uh, in Vienna, uh, and that is the, the mindset of going from being membership clubs to actually be service providers, like like. I used to say that the golf industry need to think and operate like the five star hotel. Uh, five star hotels is a service industry, they, uh, and they operate like that. Where uh, some golf courses are still stuck in the old membership uh, kind of uh, uh, thinking. So mm -hmm. that is the challenge. I see. But there's a lot of do, do you see a, a trend that this is happening? Sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, we see that that. Uh, The successful golf courses uh, operate this uh, way, and and they offer this. Uh, I, I call it the from you enter the door to you exit the door experience of, of a service, whatever it's from the person that brings you the food in the clubhouse, the facility, uh, the caddy is the yeah the food on the golf course. It has to be an experience because that's what people are coming to Asia for. Mm -hmm. You, you just mentioned uh, caddies and uh, all, all that. What, what of all this is your favorite uh, part here of golf here in Asia? What do you like most? Uh, okay, there's a lot of great difficult. golf courses. <laughs> It's a difficult question. There's a lot of great golf courses, but I think one thing that most countries here offer, not all, but most countries offer here, and that is the caddies. Mm -hmm. You don't get that uh, service experience anywhere else in the world. Yeah, yeah. And, And the caddies, they take care of you from, from beginning to end, they take care of your clubs, uh, they, they read the greens for you, they rake, they rake the sand, um, they give you a massage every couple of holes if you need it on your neck, uh, give you a refreshment towel, some drinks and so on. So yeah, that's, it really enhances the golf experience. Right. They, um, they help you to have a great round and, a, and also a better score in my opinion. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about the Thai Nordic Golf Society? Yes, that's uh, that's my pet project. Uh, we have a, a golf society under the Scandinavian Society with these Nordic people in Thailand, uh, and it has been dormant for quite a while. Uh, and I have uh, chosen uh, to revive it here after COVID, mm -hmm. uh, where we are a group of 70 people. I think in my list. Uh, that plays golf on a monthly basis and so far we are able to get around 40 golfers a month. So, um, yeah, we're doing okay. Okay. And you're working with Corvation on this project? Yes, and, and the reason I'm doing this is, as I said, I took it over to revive it and, and my aim is sustainability in this. Uh, I hope that I can build a society that will survive uh, going forward. Uh, and one of the key challenges in managing a small golf society is dealing with golf courses and that's why I've chosen to work with uh, Golf Asian uh, to coordinate all, all the practical things with the golf courses because otherwise that can be a big uh, task to manage for a volunteer perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And just the last question, I know it's not an easy one, but what's your favorite course in Asia? That's a tough question. There's a lot of fantastic golf courses in Asia and I've played a lot of them. Uh, I can't pick one uh, because there's a lot of unique golf courses and they all, I, again, I'm the guy who go for the experience uh, uh, and they all offer a different experience. Uh, I have a tendency to remember probably better the older courses uh, because I like the legacy, I like the history and even some of them are more than 100 years old. Uh, so it's really a hard pick, but probably the biggest golf experience I ever had was going to Chamangos and stuff. Mm -hmm. And which one in Asia? If we had to just pick one? 
we have to pick one, I'll probably say SLTC in Singapore. Singapore Island okay. company. Yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Just pick one of our buddies. Yeah, yeah, I know it's hard. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah. anytime I ask about the, what's your favorite course here in, in, in Asia, I get a, a list of courses. So it's, it's really difficult to choose one. And that's good because uh, it shows that Asia provides a huge breadth of courses uh, to choose from, not just one or two uh, top notch courses at the moment. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah.